In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the system description of the Garmin G1000 and basically give you a behind the scenes of everything that's going on in order to get the aircraft information from the sensors all the way ultimately to the display that you see in the cockpit. So the first thing we're going to look at is to display and that's called the GDU 1040 slash 1044 Bravo. That's the unit right here. This is where you have your um, LCD screen, you got your buttons, you got your bezel, and the there will be two of these. One of them will be the PFD, the other one will be the MFD, and they'll be connected together through a high-speed data bus, which is an Ethernet connection, so that they can share information back and forth. So if we want to think of an analogy, we can think of the GDU 1040, this device as your monitor, quote unquote, and the GIA 63-63W is kind of like your computer, your desktop, in a loose sense. It's really acting more of like a, a MUX. And what a MUX does is it takes in a bunch of sensor data from all the different units, combines them all together, and through one connection, sends that to the primary flight display. And so what the GIA 63-63W is doing is it's going to have the GPS receiver, it's going to have the VHF, COM, NAV, and uh, glide slope receivers, and the flight director and uh, system integration microprocessors are all going to be located in this guy. And there will be one of these for each display that way there's some sort of redundancy so that each display is being driven by its own uh, 63W. The next thing we need for our airplane is air data. So that's what the GDC 74 Alpha gives you. It's going to process data from the pedostatic system as well as the outside air temperature and we're going to use this for things like our pressure altitude, our air speed, our vertical speed and our outside air temperature and so all of that is going to occur or be processed in this unit and it's going to be sending this data through an Airink 429 digital interface all that means is it's a, a set standard on how the data format is being sent from one device to another if we continue down the next thing we'll see is the GEA-71. So what's that? Well, we've got an engine and we've got airframe sensors. So this is going to receive signals and process them from the engine monitor monitoring equipment and also from the airframe equipment. And that'll send that to that quote unquote MUX or desktop computer analogy, which was the 63W. Next, we've got the AHARS, so the attitude and heading information, and that's given to us by the GRS 77. And that's going to give us that information through accelerometers and rate sensors. Well, on top of that, we want to know what the heading of the aircraft is, and so we get the heading from the GMU 44. That's essentially a magnetometer. Next, we need to control the audio information for the uh, G1000 because the primary flight display and the multifunction display don't have buttons for that and so we get those buttons on the audio panel which is the GMA 1347 uh, and it also has the uh, red button in case you need to go to reversionary mode in an emergency that's located here. Next we've got the GX, excuse me, GTX 33 and we need a transponder in our aircraft. That's exactly what this is. It's a solid state mode S transponder and it's going to provide us with modes A, C, and S operation. Below that we've got the GDL 69 Alpha. That just is essentially a satellite radio receiver and that will give you real-time weather information and just like if you have a car with XM radio and all that you'll need a subscription you'll need a subscription to XM Satellite Radio to uh, receive the data for this 
unit and to access its capabilities. Below that we've got the GDL90. So all that is is an ADSB uh, receiver. And the ASB is the new type of system that's going to be coming into play for the next gen system of the FAA. And so that gives you information like the aircraft's position, velocity, track, altitude. Essentially, what it does is allow aircraft to receive information from other aircraft. So essentially, you can have a radar scope that gives you all the information of other airplanes in the surrounding area just like the controller would see, you can see that in the cockpit too to increase your situational awareness. Ne next we've got the uh, GSA-81 and GSM-85. Well, presumably we might have an autopilot. The autopilot needs some way to manipulate the controls in a physical fashion. But that's all this is. It's a servo motor and it will give you control in roll and, roll and pitch very unlikely that you'll have rudder control. Some bigger aircraft might. And you're most likely not going to have throttle control in the autopilot for something like a 172 either. So we've looked at all the major systems. Let's look at the diagram that has all of this stuff together. And it should seem fairly uh, straightforward now. We've got our displays. They are interconnected through, through this audio panel. Remember we had that uh, 63W unit, which I said was kind of like that desktop computer or MUX. Well, you can see all the things here get imported into this unit. So we've got the air data computer, we've got the AHARS, the magnetometer, the transponder, the engine and airframe information, the servos to the autopilot. All that stuff gets piped into this 63W and combined into one channel and all that gets sent to the primary flight display to be shown on the screen. And alternatively, we could also have additional things um, which would be located on the multifunctional display side, such as the autopilot and a data link for the ADSB system. And if we go to the next page, we can see that there are some other alternatives that could be on there as well. Like we could have the ELT, the storm scope, We've got an ADF, a DME, a carbon monoxide detector, and then a traffic avoidance system. And we can see where the various um, additional equipment would go to in terms of which screen. So we can see the stuff from the storm, storm scope all the way to the uh, traffic alerting system would go into the number two 63W unit, which would go into the multifunction display, and the ELT would go into the first unit which would go into the primary flight display. But remember, these have an ethernet connection so that information can be swapped between screens in the event of a failure. So you kind of have this redundancy in the sense that each one has its own individual um, 63W quote unquote muxing computer. And at the same time, you can also swap between screens if a screen were to fail. So that's all there is to it. It's fairly intuitive when you think about it and you can kind of make an analogy to all these systems that you would have in your classic uh, analog gauges. You have the same thing going on here digitally except you need to combine them because they're going to go to a screen now as opposed to individual isolated analog gauges. So that's all there is to it and it's really that simple.